Hi guys, um, I'm Andrew, if you don't know already, um, and I'm going to be lecturing you guys at advanced geometry. Um, last year I tried something sort of more formal, which was I had slides and I did lecture you guys in version. Um, I don't know how well that worked, and I attended some Dylan's lectures last year, and so I'm going to try what his style is and see if that sinks in. Hopefully, if you guys are a little more comfortable with a slightly more informal um, lecture, it, you might absorb some more knowledge. Um, I guess I should apologize in, in advance to the people that are watching at home because they won't be able to interact. What is your name? My name. Um, my name is Andrew. Andrew uh, McGregor. Um, do you want me to write it down somewhere? No, it's okay. Cool. Um, so I thought what I would stop doing was I would um, put up a problem and then we would try to solve it together a little bit, not too hectic. Um, and then if we get if we end up solving it, that's brilliant. And then whoever like helps a lot can get some math themed cookies, which I brought. Um, and uh, math themed cookies called Choco Leibniz. Yeah, um, as opposed to big mutants. Um, yeah. So I'm going to put up the problem and then we're going to look at it and we're gonna, I'm going to take some suggestions. So you're you're just putting on it. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the question is um, uh, so we have a triangle ABC. The geometry I mean, uh, there was one geometry in the One the geometry in today's um, tests. Good. good? Yeah? Like if you enjoyed it, hands up. If you hated it, hands up. <laughs> okay, so not bad, not bad. I think I was quite impressed with the uh, with the with everyone. The mocks were generally quite good. Right, so back to this. Uh, we have two points D and E on A, B, and A, C, um, such that uh, we have got parallel lines. So, parallel, and then P is arbitrary. be the circumcenters of the triangles PDG. So start the lines. question is, we have to show that AP AP is perpendicular lines O1, O2. Okay. So, so O1 is the, I guess I should probably write down the definition um, for myself. Uh, O1 is Wrong answers are 
very good as well because you can't get anywhere if you don't at least attempt it first. So, and first person to make a suggestion gets a cookie. Radical access. Radical access. That is good. Good start. So, um, why did you think radical access? I don't know. Something for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, because the radical access would be the Yes. Okay. So we we have a suggestion for the radical axis. And the reason why we think this is because we see some line perpendicular to a line between two centers. So generally, if you see that sort of condition, if you have a line perpendicular to the centers between two circles, radical axes are a good way, um, good place to stop. Um, anything else? Do you want to like suggest maybe? Okay, actually, I should first ask, is there anyone here that doesn't know what a radical axis is? Cool, this is a good segue into explaining what a radical axis is. Just a quick formality. Radical axis uses the principles of the power of a point. Is there anyone here that doesn't know what that means? Power of a point. Power of a point principle. You know what it means? Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. So, uh, uh, just quick definition quickly. Okay. Uh, power. Point. Um, that gamma would be a circle with center O. Just a quick recap. I'm sure a lot of you guys know power of a point as the circles thing. Those values that you end up getting are exactly the same. That's a small proof for another time. But that's just a quick recap. So now we'll talk about the red axes. Power of P with this 
respect to number one is equal to the power of P. So that's the definition of a radical axis. And I guess we will do like the trivial example of literally just looking at two circles and finding what the radical axis is. no difference between the point P over here and the point P over here. Um, do I need to show that given points back to the other line? Uh, okay, so I'm just going to do something. Um, yes? Uh, I, I, sorry, I couldn't see what you all right, I was just, um, I'm just trying to think of the um, best way to um, show this. So I guess let's just do the math, shall we? Because math is something we can all understand. That's why we can't. Um, I'm going to be able to see that diagram and move it away. So I'm going to stand over here and just do the math. So let's call this point here. Okay. Um, so we're going to say that this point here is called T, um, where T has the same power with respect to both circles. So then we have O1 T squared minus O1 A squared is equal to O2 T squared minus O2 B squared. And then we also have that O1 P squared minus O1 A squared is equal to O2 P squared minus O2 P squared. And now, I think what we're going to do is subtract those from each other, and then we get the O1 P squared minus O1 T squared, um, because these ones will cancel, is equal to O2 P squared minus O2 T squared. 
So at the moment, that looks like this line squared, and this line squared is equal to uh, to This one squared minus this one squared equals this one squared minus this one squared. And one can see that this looks a little bit like Pythagoras. So, O1, O2, this is definitely not the best way to write one through this place. So, O2 T squared, is equal to 1 T squared, minus O2 T squared. So that's now this one squared, that one squared, that one squared. Um, is a little bit complicated and I don't really know how to make it a bit simpler but this implies that this thing is perpendicular based on a slight can you guys see the Pythagoras in there um, I can't remember exactly how to dumb down the argument to the point where I can understand it <laughs> but the, um, I think this is actually a thing where if you have any four points this means that they are perpendicular but yeah, so I want to just move on to uh, a way that you can visualize a vertical axis from in my like problem statement. Let's see. Is that more useful? And that is, say, if you have a circle like this with another circle here, and then say a circle here. Then, if we draw the lines through here, this is uh, this is the right axis because I mean, if you look, say for instance, in this little section here, we can draw the line through here, and then there's just this line here, and you have that this point here. Um, the power with respect to this circle is this times this, and with respect to this circle, it's this times this. But this line is shared between both circles, so they have the same power. And naturally, that's going to apply to everywhere on this line. And then, same, same deal here. We can draw the lines here. So that's also another radical axis. These, this kind of radical axis pitches up a lot because it's just the line between two circles. That one's a little bit harder to see. However, if we want to look at the radical axis between these two circles, we now know that this point lies on the radical axis. Because if we look at the power of this point with respect to the circle here, It'll be, so if I just label this point, so A, B, C, D, and this point E. Then, with respect to this circle here, we have um, P, A times P, B as the power of P. And in this circle here, we have that P, A times P, B is equal to P, B times P, C. But PD times PC is the power of the this circle. So that's how you get a point on the radical axis of two circles that are touching, um, or it's one way that you can see it. Um, and if you had another circle, then you'll get another point, and then the line through there will give you the radical axis. And using this. Right, so now that I've shown you a bit about what a radical axis is about, we can look at this. And now we can start looking for the circle. So we are trying to find or show that AP is the radical axis of the circles, some circles that are centered at O1 and O2, right? Because then we'll be done. Cool. Everyone understand that? So it would be really convenient if it was these two these two circles. And I think we're end up going to showing that it is, but we need to somehow go about doing that. And I have a little 
trick about this problem, but I don't, don't really feel comfortable sharing it with you guys yet because I want to see if any of you guys can get it. But there is a message at the end, so don't worry. Um, so, I want some more ideas now. So, what do we need to do? What, can, what would be the next step if you're trying to solve this problem? So you figured out now that you want to show that AP is the radical axis of um, these two circles. What would be the next logical step? Andy? Uh, maybe like either animal chase or do the, do the PowerPoint thing from A to see if there's a Okay, so we're looking at, so at the moment we have um, the circles, so let's just look at PDG for now. So, and then because the diagram is symmetric, um, if we look at one, we'll probably find something on the other as well, which is convenient. And so, uh, we want to find some amount of, some uh, power point here. The awkward thing is, is that this circle only has three points in it, and generally with three points in it, we can't really do much aside from, say, that there is a circle. So we need to somehow find another point. Can anyone think of any other points that exist or don't exist that could be on that? Yeah? Uh, the, uh, the point that the circle exists, slightly. So, okay, so, um, like I said, I'm not gonna draw the, um, so, uh, the, uh, the circle in, but I'll draw the point. Um, what should we call this point? What do I call it? Let's call it X. Okay, so um, we construct x. Right, yeah, so construct x uh, such that uh, p x d g is cyclic. Yes. Okay. Why can we do this? So, but there is another point there. Well, it's D is tangent, but in this case, um, we'll consider the tangent as uh, the infinitesimal difference between X and D, so we can actually consider them as two separate points, which is convenient. And so now we want to look at the power of A with respect to this circle. Yes? So, in that case, we have that. I'll just write this here. So, the power of A, I'm just going to write by one for short. Um, is then equal to BA times AX. Right? Because X and D are on the circle. And that, that's it. Okay. So now we need the other side as well. And then we want to show the B tool. Right? Um, so then we say this other point gives Y. And then we'll guess how power of A is equal to 2. Is EY, no, EX times AY. Okay, and now we want to show that those two things are equal. So we want to show that uh, EA times AY is equal to AX times AD. And that's only true when EY XD is a psychic plot. So we now want to chase some angles to see if we can get this to be a psychic plot. Now, um, we know that this is cyclic, so we draw in that line. We know that this is cyclic, so we draw in that line. Um, so now we're going to have to work a bit because we know that these are parallel, so we can do some angle chasing. Um, is, there any, is there any angles that jump out at you that you want me to chase? No? Okay, so you just want me to keep chasing angles until we find convenient ones? Okay. Well, like the obvious ones here are. Uh, this one here, this one here, and uh, then if we chase that, we get that over there because that's a cyclic quad. Um, and that means that X, B, C, P is a cyclic quad because that is um, the exterior angle of the cyclic quad, yes? So then I guess what we have is that X. B, C, E, cyclic. This is an angle. 
And then, I guess, similarly, we'll chase this one here. And then we get that to this one here. And then, thus, we also get um, uh, y, c, b, p cycle. Um, now, do we notice anything interesting about those two psychic plots? Okay, I want someone to answer me here because this should be jumping out at you now. Yes, manual. Yes, psychic pentagon because we've got P, B, and G, C, which are shared shared points, and we know that three points define a unique circle, which means that these um, psychic plots. Um, actually end up forming a psychic pentagon, which is y, p, x, b, c. But more importantly, we have that y, x, b, c is a psychic, um, is a psychic what? Because we're not interested in b at this point in time. And do we know what else makes it a um, uh, what else makes um, this makes another thing a cyclic plot? What else? What else becomes a cyclic plot because of this? Someone, please. Seriously, I know you guys know this answer. Oh, yes, this one here, because they are parallel. So this angle here. Which I need to give three ones is equal to this one here, corresponding angles. And because uh, the exterior angle on this side would be 180 minus this, it would also be 180 minus that. Um, so that means that yxde is a cyclic quad. Um, um, which implies that over there. So, um, and so we're done, right? With this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just all the points with that circle from that cave? Something that just works? Yeah. That that is as well. Um, yeah. So as you can see, the the radical axis, um, as I was. I don't think I got rid of it. Um, so remember I drew that diagram with three circles. So in this case the three circles are this one, this one, and then that one. It's a very convenient uh, way of doing things. But the, the message I wanted to stress here with this question is the importance of constructions. Because you can have a geometry problem which you can sit and stare at for two hours and you're not getting the information you need out of it. And obviously, that's useless because that's two hours of your life pretty much wasted. Um, so a good thing to try is construction. Trust me, I know this firsthand. The one thing that stopped me from getting good marks in geometry for a long time was that I just couldn't solve uh, problems with constructions. So what I did was literally every time I got a geometry problem, I did a construction. Even if it was useless and stupid, I would draw another diagram if it got too messy. Um, so the importance of constructions is a thing, which also implies the need for a good diagram. Right, so that's what I want to say on that question. Um, I had a couple other questions lined up. Uh, things like here. Uh, I had this thing which is labeled as a hard problem. Um, I don't believe it. Uh, but we're going to see because I was working on it and uh, I didn't act I ran out of time before I had to come here. So we're going to see if we can solve this one together because it doesn't look super hard. And again, if we run into any problems, I'll just stop. Is there a question? No. Okay. Question goes. This is 
that cube into the place from another language. So we have a triangle with ABC. And we have a point here, T. And then we have a circle. Um, yes, that is a circle. C. Um, want to show that a t a t squared times b c equals to a b times a c times p q. And we want Yes. Okay. Is that any circle at any point q? So. Uh, T is an arbitrary point. Circle is passing through A tangent to T, tangent to B C at T. Okay. So, like I said, full disclosure, I haven't solved this problem. I have a solution here if we run out of time. Um, but it uses trig and uh, um, but I have a, a few ideas um, to solve this problem. Uh, the first one that jumps to actually, let's just see what you guys have got first. Anything that jumps to mind? Wait, yeah, that was sort of my idea as well. Stewards came to mind as well, but also Ptolemy came to mind because we have these four things here and we've got things that need to cancel and stuff. So let's try to write down both of those things. Um, a lot of you guys might not know the statement for Stewart's theorem, so I'm just going to write it down. It's basically just um, if you have a triangle yeah, um, with sides. Uh, so this length is called D, this is called M, this is called N, uh, this is called A, uh, this is called B, and this is called C. Then uh, you have Stewart's theorem states that, and this is for any triangle, um, B squared N plus C squared M is equal to B squared A plus M. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of a tricky one to remember. If you, it might just take some writing down until you get that into your head. Um, there's some mnemonic somewhere on the internet that you can find. Uh, so if we write down that of this, um, we get uh, so B is uh, AC squared and N is uh, BT squared. No, BT, sorry. And then that's AB squared and a CD. And then we want that, that's not equal to B squared, which is AT squared, and then BC. Oh, that's nice, we've already got that bit. And then we want to add a CT times a BC, and we want to multiply that by a BT. Right, okay. So we now have that, and we need to somehow get that. Um, Right, so first things first, let's say take, um, uh, put this side on that side and then put everything that isn't this on the other side and try work it out. So this is true, definitely if AT squared times BC is equal to this thing, so AC squared times BT plus AB squared. CT, and then this is we need to subtract CT, and then BC times the BT. Um, right, okay, so what's next? Someone suggest something. I'll give you a cookie. A from the back. Guys, not like cookies. Like that, not, not a thing. Okay, I'll remember that for next time. Uh, so I guess the next thing that I would think is to replace this BC with a CT plus a BT because there's no BC there and there's BTs and CTs here which are annoying. So, uh, so AC squared BT plus AB squared CT minus then a CT BT and then a CT plus BT. 
which then simplifies it down to AC squared times BT CT minus so we've got a CT squared times a BT and a BT squared times a CT. <coughs> now that looks quite interesting because we can now join these two, join these up together. I don't know if this works, but hopefully it does. Um, so we've got an AC squared minus a CT squared. And we've got, uh, multiply this by BT. And then on this side, we've got an AB squared minus a BT squared. And then this is multiplied by CT. Okay. So now we need to somehow join these things together. Right, so what have we not used? We haven't used the fact that this is tangent, right? So the only thing I can think of in this case is power of point. So power of point states that um, CT squared is equal to AC times CEP. Right? Didn't make a mistake. Good. If I make a mistake, it's your guess what? BT squared is then equal to AB times BQ. So I guess we've now got those, and we're going to chuck those in there and see what happens. So then we have AC squared minus uh, CT squared, which is AC times CP. And then there's a BT out here. And then add AB squared minus a BT squared, which is A B times BQ. And then we've got a CT on the side here. And then taking out a factor of AC and then AB over there, we we'll get an AC times that by BT, which we take from there. And then that leaves an AC minus a CP. And then this leaves Front again, AB here, um, then we've got a CT up there, and then we've got AB minus a BQ. Now these things should be on the same line, so we can subtract stuff. So AC minus CP is AB. to somehow join these two things into that thing. Now, this is where I think the Ptolemy might come in useful because we still need this PQ involved. Um, so let's take a look at what Ptolemy gives us um, and then I'll start writing down there. So who here doesn't know the statement for Ptolemy? Wow, okay, quite a lot of you. Um, so State of Ptolemy, named after the Greek philosopher and mathematician, and it's basically the person who does everything, uh, states that uh, in a cyclic quadrilateral, uh, ABCD, we have AB times CD plus AD. And it's very important that this thing is labeled um, like that, or like that, but it can't be labeled like cross. Um, so just for reference, so just draw a big one. So uh, basically the sum of the product of the opposite sides is equal to the product of the diagonals. Proof of that, I actually have slides for you. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Um, uh, so we're going to use that here, where our cyclic quad is AQTP. And let's see what we get. We get AQ times PT. 
Or I'm not sure we're going to get rid of that, but we're going to try. Um, plus AP times QT is equal to AT times PQ. Now, we need to find a way to get this, which I presume is going to be this side here, because we've got APs and AQ over there. Um, and then we're going to get this side out, because that will give us the PQ. So, we're going to probably have to do some fancy manipulation um, by finding. Uh, I'm going to I want to divide through by 80. I feel like that is the right thing to do. For now. Why is it getting so dark? Um, so let's say a q times p t plus 80 plus a p times q t. And then I'm going to multiply by AB times AC so we can get that off on that side. So then AB uh, times AC times AQ times PT over AT plus AP times AC. going to do that by chasing similar triangles. But first, what I want to do is I want to um, basically just let them be equal and see how I'm going to show them equal. So, with like an unknown relation. So, if we have AB times AC times AQ times PT of AT is equal unknown to uh, AB times CT times AQ, then this would imply that using the same relation, by cancelling the AB and the AQ, we get AC over AT is equal to CT over PT. Okay, so not that unknown thing. So using that, I kind of want to prove that. Let's see if we can prove that. So what's AC over CT? So AC over CT is this thing here. So let's draw this triangle over. Um, so, and then CT over PT. CT over PT. I think this is going to work. So if we have, using tan chord theorem, we have this angle here. Right? Everyone know why that's true? Good stuff. Right? And I think we need one more. Alright, we've got this angle is shared. So, um, since we have two angles in the triangle that are the same, we can say that the two triangles are similar. So, and we need to be careful about this, so we're going to have triangle, say, easy to is similar to T, uh, then we to C, so then we can go back to C, and then I went to T, we can go to A. So then we have that similarity, and then we need to read off the ratios, which are, in this case, we have AC of AT, so that's AC of AT will give us um, AC will give us uh, TC, and AT will give us TP. So we get AC over AT, that. And just the rewriting letters, we get CT over PT. And 
I claim we're done now, but does everyone see why we're done? Okay, so basically what happens is we now have this is true, so we can remove the question marks on top of the equal mark signs. So then since we have that as true, we can do the arrangements and we can replace uh, basically just substituting since AC of AT is equal to CT of PT. This implies that we get this thing out, which is, um, we'll just put in brackets up the front, the ones that we cancelled, AB times AQ. And then it's the AC times uh, PT over AT. And then from there, we sub that in there, and we get that one out. So I should probably label these things. So this is equation one, and this is going to be equation two, and this is going to be equation three. And then, will you guys just take my word that um, by symmetry? Oh, I should probably point this out because it did appear in one of the problems, but it could have been in um, solutions, it could have been intermediate. When someone says by symmetry, they don't mean the uh, the shape or whatever you're talking about is symmetrical, as in it has a line of symmetry. They mean using an argument that is essentially identical. Just a clarification. Uh, by symmetry, we will also have that um, AB times AC. going to take my word that that's correct using basically the same argument because we just do the, sim the similar triangles but uh, instead of looking at uh, P, T, C and uh, T, A, C we look at T, Q, B and T, Q, B, and uh, A, T, B is the other psychic, uh, other um, similar triangles, thanks. And um, we get out this one. And then we will take three, and we will take four, and we will put that into one. And we will get um, that AC, sorry, AB times AQ times CT plus AC times BT times AB is equal to AB AC. there and then which then is then equal to by chasing that back up AT squared BC and finally we get out that AT squared BC is equal to AB times AC times AQ Guys, this is my typo. How dare you? Um, yeah, so that's uh, as uh, also I think I'm nearly running for time. Uh, but that's done now, which is good because I nearly thought we weren't going to solve that, or, or I wasn't going to solve that. Um, or we? No, you're like, we. Why not? Um, now, challenge to you guys if you can come up with a shorter method of solving that, I will give you all the cookies. Well, all that left off that I give out to people who said 
if you if I said I would give you a cookie, come to me afterwards, I'll give you a cookie. Easy um, Yeah, so any questions about that particular proof? So uh, what is the theorem that is on the right? On the right, oh that's uh, someone can someone check me whether it's an E or an A? I'm not sure. A reasonable proof. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think the easiest way is using um, the uh, the cos law in these two triangles. So you look at the angle there, and you do the cos law there, and you look at the angle there, and you do the cos law there, and it, it comes up. Um, I think that's the best way that I've seen it. Um, uh, but I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to do it now. No, no, no. I do have a proof of Ptolemy's theorem on a set of lecture slides, which I will consider doing tomorrow. If you guys want to, do you guys want to see a proof of Ptolemy's theorem? Uh, Ptolemy, it's, I mean, Ptolemy is actually a generalization of Stuart. Stuart's as well. Stuart's is a special case of Ptolemy, which is really weird. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, I like the idea. Uh, you, know, you know two things have to be equal, so yeah. you, you kind of I just haven't really seen that, but it makes total sense. Yeah. You make them equal and then figure out what well, you then need to. Yeah, you've got to be really careful when writing that up. Um, that's why I was very careful in writing equals with a question mark. Um, sort of, it, it may, basically means these things are related somehow. So it could be that they're not quite related and that actually this thing was this thing multiplied by some constant factor. And then, uh, but the idea is just to reduce two arguments. Uh, well, you say that you look at two things, you go, well, that should be equal to that. So I'm going to see what I have to do to get that to be equal to that. And sometimes you end up getting really nice stuff, which can be solved nicely. Um, other times you can get something which is terrible. Um, so it is a game of sort of, a bit of luck is involved. But um, I hope that me solving a geometry problem in front of you guys, um, by the what was going through my mind, was a little bit helpful. Um, yeah, is there any questions? Any one other observation is that the, the, your similar triangles that you proved are the yeah. same ones that, that the parallel point comes from, yeah. CT squared. I'm wondering if you could just quote, you can just maybe quote those other ratios. If you have uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. I mean, that's how the power point, um, uh, generally those particular values, they do come from precisely those. Uh, that, that's the standard proof. But it can also be shown that um, the multiplication is equal to the formal definition. It's not super hard, you just look at the nice um, Right, yeah, so I, I think I'm very impressed with running out of time, and then you guys have like snacks and stuff outside, I think. Also, my cookie. Um, uh, I don't think there was anything more. Any, any clarification on anything that I've done at all? One last thing that I forgot to mention in the previous problem um, why would we not have? If we wrote up what that solution was, I mean that solution was technical. Yeah. Um, oh, draw it again. Okay, so uh, do you mind if I not draw the labels? Just look like the diagram. So parallel. Also, why could have been below, but that is symmetric to having one of them below. I don't know if both of them can be below. Someone might want to take a look at that. But more importantly, P does not have to lie above DE. 
B could be here, and then there's no circle that rose, runs through all of them, and it becomes a little bit more complicated. So there is a second case that you do have to do, um, which is important, because remember that problems can change. Can so if P isn't above it, you have to like extend CP and BP. Is that what it means, or it's not P and F is not fine? Uh, I think... Um, the short answer is that the thing that runs through all five points is not a circle, it's a hyperbola. Um, but the long answer is, I, I think it's just a similar angle chase, um, but you have to be careful. Um, but for this particular one, because of the whole massive change of um, the circle no longer existing, uh, it's, you have, you, I don't think uh, directed angles would work as a way to save that. The, the case would have to be done separately. Okay, I think that's me done. Um, sorry? Biscuit bread. Yes, it is biscuit bread. Thank you guys for listening and for putting up with that. <laughs>